Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about bits, specifically the Rockin' S raised snaffle and the McGregor releasing bits. These are two bits that I highly recommend. Now, first things first, let me get this off the table and if you're watching this from the beginning, this will be great. Bitless is a wonderful way to go. My own personal horses are ridden bitless and I think it's fantastic. However, I do believe it's something that takes time to train correctly so that you're safe. So I am a proponent of bitless. If you ride bitless, I'm not suggesting you switch to a bit, but be aware that I do think bitless generally has a, a longer training time. Secondly, I do not think that bits create gait. So I am not pushing the, either of these bits on you. There have been a lot of questions and so I'm making this video just to educate. If you never buy these bits, that's wonderful. I recommend bits that are generally very comfortable for horses. However, one of the bits that I recommend is the Rockin' S Raised Snaffle and some horses do not like this bit. I completely understand that and if your horse does not like this bit, oh, here we go, from here, it doesn't like this bit, don't worry about it. Don't buy it or sell it. If you have one for sale, I will post it and it will sell almost immediately. I guarantee it. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about this and how it should sit in the horse's mouth because that's a very common question. And then we're also going to talk about this bit, the uh, McGregor releasing bit with short shanks. Uh, you can also get this bit in the longer shanks. I don't sell it, but you can buy it. It's the same bit. The shanks come out longer. And I have some examples to show you. Uh, again, I do not believe that bits or bridles or saddles create gait. However, if your horse is uncomfortable with the tack you're using, that is absolutely going to affect their gait. And it is on you to pay attention to know if the saddle doesn't fit, if the bit it doesn't feel good in the horse's mouth, and to change it and find what works. Now, both of these are rather expensive bits. So what I'm going to say is that there are often cheaper alternatives. And I want to point that out because I am not looking to make money by selling you stuff. And a lot of trainers do that. I am not one of them. If you never buy these, it's totally fine. Um, so I'm gonna, this is not gonna be talking about other bits, though I wanna do a video soon. Um, speaking of which, there's a few bits that I need that I don't own. If anybody's willing to send them to me and loan them to me, that'd be fantastic uh, because I do not ride or train with them. So one of the things that I need that I don't have is the, uh, the Wonder Bit. Um, an Argentine snaffle bit and a walking horse bit. So if anybody has those that they want to give to me or just loan to me, ship them to me and I'll ship them back uh, because I would like to talk about the differences, like why the wonder bit is a gag bit, but I don't actually own one and I want to be able to put it on a horse and show footage of it. So if anybody wants to send me those. Okay, back, back to the topic at hand. Oh, we have a question. My horse is apt to putting his tongue over a snaffle. Will the McGregor allow his tongue to get over that bit? He's in a medium port shank right now. Uh, thank you for helping me. And that, okay, so that's what Cheryl says. So um, I can't guarantee that your horse won't put their tongue over the bit. Some horses do this like the first day of training um, when I'm working on it. But usually if you just keep riding, I fix it once or twice and then I let them and I ignore them and I continue training. And they usually stop doing it because it doesn't feel good. It is a raised, so it's kind of like it has a port, but it's meant so that it doesn't collapse totally on their tongue like a single jointed snaffle would. And, uh, but I can't guarantee that he won't get his tongue over it. So I can't, I can't really guarantee that, Cheryl. Lisa says, thank you for helping me sell my bit. Only cause the size I got. So she bought, Lisa bought the Rockin' S Ray Snaffle, this one. Uh, but it didn't, they, most places only sell it in a five. You can get it, I'm not sure, there's places that sell it in a five and a half. Um, and this uh, she, she, it what didn't fit her horse. So I just posted at my private training group and she had it sold within like a day. So I, I don't want people to buy expensive tack and not be able to get rid of it. So I will, if you have one to sell, I will post it and there is a shortage. So likely it will sell quickly. Um, Patty asks, is this bit pinchless? Yes. This one doesn't, I mean like, so if I pull this way, like I can, I could pinch my finger, but when you have reins on it, you know, you're only pulling, you know, one side this way. Um, and we're going to talk about that or you're pulling back. And if you pull back, 
on both reins, it does not pinch. Sure, you could pinch your finger in it if you collapsed it this way, but bits don't work like that. I mean, like, yes, you could you could pull and kind of pinch your finger here, but, but we never pull, <laughs> it's never like that in the horse's mouth. So that's a good question. Um, Sue, oh, well, so Cheryl mentioned the French link snaffle. So that's one of the things I want to talk about is, so we talk about not having to pay as much. A French link snaffle is much cheaper and they come in all different styles, whether you want full cheek or D ring or loose ring. Uh, and it has three pieces. It's not raised, but it has three pieces. So it's a really good option that's inexpensive. And you can find most tack stores and you, any of the tack places online will carry a French link snaffle. Keep in mind, if you don't get a full cheek snaffle with the bar straight up and down, then you must use a curb strap to keep it from pulling through the horse's mouth. It, the curb strap doesn't do anything in terms of control. It just, if you pull on one rein, say to do a one rein stop, it keeps it from sliding through the mouth. This bit, because it has these rings, won't slide through their mouth very easily at all. And so you don't use a curb strap with it. Let's, um, Sue says, we'll put her tongue over a snaffle and she stopped putting her tongue over with the rock and ass raised snaffle. So Sue, thank you so much for commenting. And she said the old snaffle was a French link. So that's fantastic information for people. Thank you so much for commenting. Okay. So this bit, why do I like this bit? So I, if I could train all horses in a snaffle or bitless, I absolutely would. I would never go to a shanked bit. And we're going to talk about those times when I would go to a shanked bit in a minute. This, um, I very first did try this in the summer of 2017 when I traveled around the country and I happened to see, or one of the horses I worked with was ridden in this. And I was like, well, what is this bit? I've never seen this. It's weird because it, you know, it's got the mouthpieces and, and this swivels. And I was like, I don't know, but the horse was very soft and light. Now, granted, I am completely aware that softness is not a matter of bit, but I was very interested just to try it because uh, it, she heard about it because it was recommended by uh, Mark Rashid or Rashid, however you say his name. But he didn't make this or design this bit. He simply started using it and liked it. Um, this was designed by a guy named Mark Sulin. And uh, so there, there is a little bit of a trick in terms of which way it goes in the horse's mouth. Um, if you hold it by where the bridle attaches and you look at it, the mouthpiece, I don't know if I can show the camera well enough, the mouthpiece will tip toward the back. So right now it is, this should go toward the back of the horse because if I'm holding it, the, this, the middle piece is tipped toward the back. And I don't think, there should be like a little mark on here that points toward the back. So on this one, uh, maybe it's like this on all of them. Somebody could tell me. So if I look at it, it has a marking here um right right here on each bit and if if this is true for all of them which i don't know if it is that goes toward the back of the horse's mouth so definitely check um it can be a little bit tricky to figure out which way it goes and i used it the wrong way for a while and the horses were fine so i first tried this on a horse in colorado that I rode for a single lesson and I asked what it was. I ordered it and then I came, took a while to come. When it finally came, I started using it horses at clinics and the difference was amazing. Now I have tried to go back and find the footage and I didn't find it in time for today. So I will be looking for that to show you guys later, uh, the dramatic difference, because there was a lot of difference for some horses. We would switch them from a snap, from a shanked bit to this and the softness was amazing. Now that said, some horses react big to this bit and will rear or pull for a day or two, but then on the third or the fourth lesson, they settle down and like it. Some horses like it just the way it is. So I had somebody comment just today that they ordered this and they took their horse on a trail ride and their horse was amazing and relaxed and loved it. Some horses really don't like it and then you need to sell it and find a bit that your horse likes and that's completely fine. Again, it is not the bit that makes the gate. And some horses, if you're being if they're being ridden in like a miler comfort snaffle, like a snaffle, not a shanked bit, this is very similar. So I've I've tried this on horses that were ridden in a comfort snaffle, the miler one, and we switched it and there was no difference. So if you're already using one of those, don't, you don't necessarily need to change. Again, I'm not all about just buying stuff for the sake of buying stuff. So that's kind of, uh, that's, and I know a lot of people have questions about which way it goes. Um, 
Sherry says, so are you holding it as if that your head is the horse's head? So it would go in that direction. So right now, uh, I am holding it where, uh, the is pointing toward the back of the horse. So, right. That's the horse's head. That's the horse's rump back that way. Um, and, but this way, like I said, so if, if yours has little markings on it on the inside of the rings, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me, uh, change this here. You go. So on the rings, then that probably goes toward the back of the horse. And it is tricky. That's why I'm talking about it in this video, that it points. I don't know. It's so hard to show. Do you see, see how it's leaning back? The middle piece, the mouthpiece, that's kind of goes toward the back of the horse. I don't know how well you guys can see it. It's really tricky to try to show in a video what I mean uh, when I can't show the camera like upside down, like because the middle piece will tip back. Uh, that doesn't really show it either. Okay. So if you have any more questions about the rock and ass ray snaffle, um, I will try to answer them and I'll bring it up. So why do, when do I recommend snaffles? Okay. So this is a really good question. When, if you have a green horse and you're not doing bitless, then I recommend a snaffle. If you are retraining a horse that has big shanks, I recommend a snaffle in an enclosed area so you stay safe. Please don't get hurt by throwing a snaffle in their mouth and going on the trail and having your horse run away. This is very bad. Don't do this. If you have a trotty horse, please don't ride them in a shanked bit. If you're doing the work, train the softness and then do the head up in a snaffle or a bitless bridle. Again, I'm very much in favor of bitless bridles if your horse likes it and you want to do the training. Those are situations. Now, I ride and trail ride all the different training horses with just a snaffle or a bitless bridle. I'm never trying to ride them in a shanked bit. However, um, let me tell you an example where I was... You, I switched to the McGregor releasing bit, which we're going to start talking about, uh, for training. So I had a mare and she was really well trained and I had her in the snaffle, but she wasn't, she was keeping her head down, but not as well as I wanted, but I trained the softness, trained the head down. She, she was doing it, but I needed more because she was pacey and I needed that head down. So I switched to this bit for one week just one week and rode her mostly on the road and in the pasture. And, and I could use this to say, no, keep your head down and tell her a little more firmly. And she did really well. She started gating and I switched her back to the snaffle and she was amazing. Okay. So let me talk about the other thing too. So why do I recommend this bit? Uh, and this bit does need to have a curb strap. I recommend getting a simple leather one. Uh, you know, the bridle attaches here, the curb strap attaches here as well, and your reins attach here. This bit was designed by Scott McGregor, who show, trains and shows Tennessee walking horses. And he designed this bit, uh, actually, so he designed one with the bigger shanks, which I don't own, but it also is good. Uh, same thing, but he designed it to be balanced in the horse's mouth so that when the horse put his head uh, vertical, like tucked his nose and put his head down, this felt the best in the mouth. But like when they had their nose out, it, it, it was, it didn't feel as balanced in their mouth. And I love how this feels and how simple it is. And yes, these point toward the back of the horse, back of the horse. Okay. Back of the horse. Um, some people have seen it and they're like, it's the wrong way. I'm like, it doesn't go that way. That points toward the back of the horse. Okay. Uh, you can, I'll show you a picture. Um, this one here and here you go. Here's the picture. This is how it should fit in the horse's mouth. And you can see where the bridle attaches and you can see the curb strap and where the reins attach there at the bottom. That's what it should look like. Now, also something to keep in mind, this is called sweet iron. It's basically iron. <laughs> sweet is not really sweet. It's sweet iron. It's basically iron. It will rust. So, um, this one's dirty. Uh, it'll give an even more rusted, but you can see how this has started to rust. That's normal. Uh, one thing that some people have had a problem with, and it only matters for some horses, is their horses will be a little bit uh, sore from using it, which means probably are using it too much. Um, but if your horses get sore, you can just buy rubber bit guards and put those on there and that will completely stop any soreness. So watch for that. And the rubber bit guards cost like six bucks or four bucks. So it's not expensive. Also, when you're fitting this, you might notice there's this slight outward angle to both of these. It's important to make sure that those go out and not in like that. So make sure you fit. Um, so these are pointed to the outside where you attach the bridle so that it hangs uh, the correct way. All right. Uh, so 
this is a good bit uh, for those. Now, okay, let me get on my, my slight rant, my pet peeve right here, is that if your horse isn't stopping or is going too fast on the trail, it means you need to spend time training. However, I know that many people watching this will not actually train. So, in lieu of that, if you don't want to train in a snaffle, but you want a trail ride and you feel like you need more, this is a great option. Most horses love this bit. And I'm going to show you two examples. One's very dramatic, and I love showing this example. It's the most dramatic change that I've seen in a horse with this bit. Um, it's actually with the longer shank bit because I hadn't designed the shorter shanks yet, but you'll get the idea. So it'll look slightly different because the shanks will be a little bit longer, but I want to answer any questions. Uh, Lisa says Mark Rashid does sell the five and a half. So yeah, I think you have to contact him, like email him and you can get it from him there. Uh, Kenneth says you're awesome. Well, thank you so much. Megan says, what do I look for to see if there's soreness sensitivity like you mentioned? Oh, well that's actually easy. So if you're looking for the soreness, uh, there'll be like little rub marks on the corners of their mouth, right, right here. So it's on the outside. So just, just look for that. And if you see it, you can just get some bit guards or make some bit guards. Like I'm not you know, super picky how you do that, but it's, uh, you know, it's not hard to do. So, um, I love this and it has helped so many horses relax. Let me show you one of the most dramatic examples. Now this horse, I'm going to show you when I first get on him and he was ridden in, it's kind of a spade bit. I, I hadn't seen very many horses ridden in this. It's, he's high headed. It's kind of yucky to see this first day, but he basically, anytime I touch the reins, even lightly, he would throw his head up and you're going to see that here. So this horse, I think it was a Tennessee walking horse. It might've been a Rocky. It probably was a Rocky. I'm not actually hundred percent sure, but I'm being very soft and light. And now this granted, this is like, tw uh, 2017. So this is four and a half years ago. Just FYI, I'm probably a better rider now. Um, I dropped my stirrups because they were very short. Um, and you can just see he's so high headed. Look at this. He's really pacey, very taking very short steps to the back end, very high headed, you know, a little bit of a stepping pace there. But every time I just touch the bit to ask him to soften, he would throw his head. Okay. So, and then I did switch him to the snaffle, but the problem was that the owner didn't feel like she could control the snaffle. So the last day, this is day three of the clinic, I put him in the McGregor releasing bit with the full shanks. And this bit, this part of it, it's only like two minutes long here. There was an amazing change. So I'm starting to work on slowing him down and then softening, uh, asking him to soften and drop his head. So he'd done some of that training before, but this was the very first time I rode him with this bit. Uh, and just, just watch, it gets amazing here. So I start to release, but I don't let him go too fast. Uh, and I'm not giving you the audio because it was pretty windy and I wasn't wearing a microphone. Um, but just look at the change in how he moves and I start to release. So you can see my hands release and then he speeds up and puts his head up. And so then I ask him to soften again. So this is a really good video to show. Um, and this again would be a horse that I would spend a lot of time training in the snaffle, but the owner was like, I'm not going to ride him in a snaffle because she's like, I can't stop him. And so I was like, well, let's try this bit that I have that's supposed, and I had just gotten it. So it was new to me. I brought it and this horse, look, the change was amazing. He stopped throwing his head because the problem was actually the bit. And look at that gait. I mean, he just started, this is just like 10 minutes of riding him in this bit. Um, and his gait and his, how he looked totally changed. And I'm trying to give him a loose rein, but he wants to speed up. But as he stays, look at that gate. It's like perfect. And it was such a huge change. And when I pick up on the reins, he didn't suddenly throw his head up, which we saw before. I was just completely blown away. He still needed some training to be a little bit softer. And I'd still use the shorter shank bit and do all this training, the stop training and all of the things we talked about last week. Uh, but it was such a dramatic change. And he started to drop his head and didn't react so forcefully when he felt it because this bit isn't meant to just cause huge amounts of pain. Look at that. I released the reins and he started dropping his head and his gait was amazing. Now he wanted to speed up, so I put contact and then release. Look at that. It looks like a different horse. Let me just, just to go back, let's look at day one. Look at this. This is in three one hour sessions. Now, the bit does have a lot to do with this, both negatively and positively. This bit was horrible on him. He hated it. He was throwing his head up. The slightest bit of contact made him react. But look at the transformation just three days later. Look at the tail being relaxed. 
so, so nice of a gate. It's just, it, it's, it's amazing. I, I love showing that example because it's so dramatic, but it shows how bits can make a horse really uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, Kath says, so my 20 year old Tennessee walking horse mare is soft when it is just us on the trail, but we compete in CTRs, which is competitive trail riding. And she likes to get higher headed in all the excitement. Would it be good to use McGregor bit, McGregor bit when she's got toed and the raised desk when she has her act together? Yes, that's a fantastic idea. You can also trail ride with both bits. Um, so that you, if you feel like your horse is getting too hot, you can switch to the other one and do lots of work on head down. But remember, it's the release that gets it, whether you're using the rock and ass or the McGregor releasing bit. Sherry said, that's what my horse does. I can't wait to try my new bit. Well, yeah. Uh, so remember it's <laughs> for everybody watching, whether you use your bit or the McGregor or the rock and ass Ray snaffle, it is about the release of the bit. If you are not releasing, then you are not getting the benefit of any of the bits. It is about training and training comes through releasing. So that's super important for everyone to hear. Um, Kenneth says beautiful running walk. Kenneth, it is not a running walk. There is no head nod. It is actually a perfect saddle rack. I should have said that saddle rack, saddle gate. It's not a running walk. The running walk needs a bigger stride from the hind end and it needs a head nod. So if you need, I can share the link to the video, uh, about what the, the flat walk and the running walk is. And this is true. Even if you just look at their websites, they must have a head nod, must have that really big overstride from the hind end. But if we look here, um, the horse is gating nicely, but just taking fairly short steps in the back end that tells us it's that saddle rack. There's no head nod, meaning it's not a fox trot, it's not a running walk, um, and it's perfectly even. You can see I'm not bouncing. It's just lovely. So great point bringing that up. Um, okay, so I have one more to show you. It's not as dramatic. So this is the bit that um, she's normally ridden in, though she's well trained. And uh, she yeah. already gates, but she, she gets yep, a little okay. gacy. So she's being ridden in one of the Myler comfort snaffles. Okay. And she does fantastic in it. You can also ride her in a halter. She knows softness okay. you, Are you done chewing yet? That's not the issue. And we then um, I asked her to leg yield or do the bit. lateral work, like with the other horses. Oops, sorry. Uh, we want to work on her gait a little bit. And then we also wanted to try her in the McGregor. So you can see here, she gets a little pacey. She knows she gets, starts gating when she moves her shoulder over. So if you've heard me talk about leg yield, that's what we work on with this mare uh, to get her into gait. So she can gait. Um, she still needs to work on head down, but she knows softness. Like I pick up on the reins and she softens. It's totally, she knows it. Not a big deal. But we wanted to try her and she does great in the snaffle, but we wanted to try her in the McGregor. So here, I've just put her in it. Um, let's skip ahead here. So now it's this first time riding her in the McGregor releasing bit with short shanks. And I'm asking her, and I think uh, she's looking for treats. <laughs> uh, but I want to just watch from here so you can see. Um, so what was really interesting with this horse is she, not, with this bit, she carries herself differently than in the snaffle. So she knows how to soften. She already does that fantastically in a halter or a snaffle. But with this bit, she started carrying her head. Uh, I, that was probably just working on the canter there. I want to work on where we're getting in gate. So let me skip ahead a little bit. There we go. So just asking her uh, if we can or here, I'll probably skip ahead because we did work a little bit on canter. Um, but I want to work where we work on gate because I do. Here we go. So she starts just carrying her head, like tucking her nose on her own when I would have the reins loose and dropping her head just by carrying the bit. Now I I am asking her to soften a little bit here, um, but she started just gating and dropping her head more naturally than with the snaffle. She still was a little pacey and I'm asking her to move her shoulder over, but she was just incredibly soft. And this isn't like as instantaneous as the other horse. And there she's putting her head up, but she just started carrying herself a lot better and everybody could see the difference. I don't know if this is a great moment for you to see this and I stop and stand. And here's outside. Again, when you go outside, a lot of times there's, you know, increased energy. Um, so we are still working on some head down. But I just wanted to show, look at her just tuck her nose, the hardly, like hardly anything there. And there she gated, which is why I stopped. And I'll go ahead, we're coming back. 
she just look at her she just softens and tucks and starts having this nice gait and then she puts her head up and this little touch gets her to drop it so I just wanted to show that as a, as a little bit of an example. It's not as dramatic, but it was a really, really pretty example of it. Uh, okay, let me know if there's any questions. I think I'm finishing up. So we have here, <laughs> I can untangle this from my mic cord. Okay, you know, uh, we have, you know, the Rock and S Ray Snaffle, which I do recommend, and the McGregor Releasing Bit. However, these bits don't cause gait training does. These bits don't make your horse stop. Training does. These bits don't make your horse turn. These bits don't make your horse calmer. Training is what does that. And I definitely, that's one of my pet peeves is if you buy these bits, I like them. And I make a little bit of money off of this one. I don't make any money off of this one. But the problem is you have to understand that what goes along with this is training. Training, spending the time. And again, when I say training, sometimes it only means a few hours of training to make progress with your horse, but many people are unwilling to do that. Let me know if you have any questions about these two bits. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I was going to mention. Uh, I do want to do another video soon, again, talking about bits. So if anybody has bits, they can send me. I'm looking for, a, and I'm, I even just to borrow, a walking horse bit, a wonder bit, and an Argentine snaffle. Uh, those are bits that I don't own and I would love to borrow and then do a video explaining how some of those bits work, why I like them, why I don't, or an Imus bit as well, um, because that's a very popular bit that I don't like and I can want to talk about it. I feel like there's something else. Also, if you're just tuning in, please know I do like bitless as well. Uh, I'm not in favor of mechanical hackamores as a general rule, so uh, there are some great bitless options out there and but it does involve doing more training I feel like I'm repeating myself April says they come in cob size my spotted saddle horse is only 13 hands so this one I have never seen in I've never seen this in a four and a half I have put this in small horses mouths and they do pretty well but it is heavy this one that was a great question by the way thank you this one comes in four and a half five, five and a half and six inch sizes. So this one definitely. If you are wanting more like the snaffle, you can find pony sizes for French link snaffles very easily. Uh, and I, I think I even own one in case I have a small horse. So you can definitely get this, uh, get a French link snaffle, which is a really good option. You can get that in the smaller size. Uh, okay. Megan says, I could send you my IMIS once I get my horse settled into his new one. That's fine. There's no rush. I will be on the road for the next two weeks. Uh, Kath says, do you want me to send it to you? Uh, oh, Kath says she's been using a Wonder Bit. Well, only if you're not using it, you can send it to me. Uh, I do not like the Wonder Bit. So if you have other bits that you know you'll be safe riding in, that I would love to borrow it and I can mail it back to you. Dora says, so the Rocking S, as far as, a, uh, let's see. Let's see is first as far as horse experience then correction with the shank so great question doris thank you for asking that so the rock and s is i do my training in this but you'll see me switch to the mcgregor at a clinic to help with the horse learn something a little bit faster most of the time you may never need to go to the mcgregor releasing bit it's mainly used as a crutch and i do mean as a crutch you can use it as a little bit of a training aid but why buy a $130 bid if it's just a training aid? But it's, it's a crutch for those who want to ride on the trail and their horse gets hot and they don't want to actually spend time training. And yes, that sounds a little bit harsh, but it is training that controls your horse. So uh, you, do, you hopefully can train in the snaffle and never go to a shanked bit. You, this, I give this option as something that can help horses and owners at the same time. It goes this way. Uh, but I do love snaffles and bitless bridles. Does that answer the question a little bit? Um, De Danae says, I came in late, so forgive me if I already asked this. Is one of these better for a pacey horse? So that's a great question. We haven't answered it, but I will tell you this, that working with a pacey horse comes with practice and training. So if you send me a pacey horse, I'm going to ride them in this. Okay. And like I said, I had a pacey horse that I rode for a week in this one just to work on more head down. And then I went back 
to a snaffle. So it's all about training softness and head down. Uh, don't really use this for a trotty horse because you want to be working on head up and softness, but a snaffle is good for a trotty horse, but it's not like this is good for Pacey and this isn't. I recommend the snaffle for training. Mm, Lori says, wow, my horse loved the I miss comfort mouth. Looking forward to what you have to say about it. If your horse loves it, I, I, I can't, and I, and I'm, it's fine. I know some horses do love it, but I know a lot of horses that hate it because it's big and clunky and it's not well balanced. So that's my short. Diana says, I have the wonder bit too. Yes, I'm very much against it because it is a gag bit. And when I get all those bits, I will do another video on that. Uh, does the McGregor releasing bit encourage the horse to reach for the bit? So what do you mean when you say reach for the bit? Because a lot of times we use terms that, I don't know, I would say guessing what you mean, it absolutely does, but horses learn to reach for the bit no matter the bit with good training, with releases. If you're not releasing the bit, then I, I mean, I don't care what bit you use. If you don't release, you might as well just let your horse be miserable in whatever you're using because the bit isn't going to fix it. Not gonna fix it. Uh, but good question. Uh, Kenneth says he went totally bitless. Absolutely. Then don't buy of any of these bits. If your horse does fantastic bitless, don't change. How do you measure for proper size if I want the McGregor bit? Well, basically, Cheryl, what do you have now? Uh, and measure that mouth size or look it up. And then you can order the same size or a little bit bigger. April says, would a dog bone O-ring snaffle work? It would definitely work, but I don't like dog bone as much as a French link. So basically at that point, it's just what, uh, April, it's what your horse would prefer. So put it in. Does he like it? And give it a few rides. I mean, you don't have to just know in one ride. Give it a few rides. See if your horse likes it. If he's, if he doesn't seem to like it, try a French link, try a rock and ass, borrow some bits from a friend. I'm big on borrowing if you can. So you try before you buy. But those are great, great questions. So, uh, yes, I like that question. I wish I would have thought of answering it. You know, which one is good for uh, a Pacey horse? Well, I train Pacey horses in this all the time. And I work on softness and head down and use ground poles. Uh, in my training DVDs, I have two videos where I show the complete gated training of two horses. And both were ridden in the snaffle. I never, I, can't, I don't think I ever switched to McGregor. Maybe I did for one day, but the training was done, the head down, all of the, the leg yields, all of the training was done in the snaffle. Uh, this is again used, I'll use for a very short amount of time for training softness and head down if I need to, if the horse is struggling with it and I'm on a time crunch. Um, and also it's for people that feel like they can't control their horse with a snaffle on the trail because I absolutely do not want anyone getting hurt. So if you can't control your horse in a snaffle on the trail, then yes, find a bit that you can control them in. Uh, okay. That was a long video. I hope that answered most people's questions about these two bits. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment below and then be watching in a few weeks for a video about um, about the different bits and how they work and ones I like and ones I don't like. But keep in mind, I'm not about you just buying stuff. So if everybody watches this video and no one goes and buys a bit and they spend time training, I call that a win because I'm not about stuff. If what you have works, do the training, make sure you release the reins and you are going to be so far ahead with your horse and other people because you've put the time in. Uh, I just have a video that I'm going to share later from a lady of her riding her horse and her horse is gating on the road on a loose rein. She said he was very pacey and she did the head down and she did stop and praise. She did those two things and now her horse has an amazing gait. But you know what? She spent time training and she worked on head down and she was willing to do the stop and praise. So if I could wish for anything, it's that people would learn that. And I'm going to Pennsylvania this weekend and I have four sessions that I'll be teaching. I hope I can convince people that head down is valuable and that stop and praise is valuable. I don't want them to buy my DVDs if they didn't hear that because those are the two most important things. And my DVDs can help you, but if you're not willing to do those two things, don't buy my stuff because it won't help you. Stop watching my videos if you're not willing to do the work because what I have won't help you if you're not willing to do softness and head down and you're not willing to practice stopping and standing. And when I stop and praise, I mean stop for a minute or two or longer. Anyway, tomorrow we're talking about how to get 
a good gait by adding impulsion or adding speed. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love having an audience in this interaction. Let me know, comment if you have any other questions and I will put my address in the description of the video in case anybody does wanna send me their bit. Make sure you include information if you want it back and I will mail it back to you after I do the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. You got this.